you can think about inflation uh, from a couple of different angles. One way to look at it is to sort of look bottoms up, good by good, right? How much is services X housing and housing and core goods and oil prices and stuff like that. And that can define how to think about uh, inflation and what's likely to transpire. On the flip side, the other way to look at it um, is to think about the structural inflation in the economy as a function of what does nominal wage growth look like? relative to productivity growth. <clears throat> and so as an example, if I'm paying someone, you know, their wages are increasing on an hourly basis by 6% a year and their productive capacity is only increasing by 1% a year, well then naturally what has to happen is the difference between that nominal income uh, earnings that they're getting, that nominal income growth versus the productivity growth in the economy defines what the structural inflationary pressure is because the difference between those two essentially has to be a rise in prices. And so I think what we're seeing uh, when we're looking at the economy today is that we're seeing that structural inflation dynamic that hasn't really resolved well enough. You know, wages on an hourly basis are running at maybe a 5% growth rate between four and 5%, depending on how exactly you measure it and what exactly you measure. Whereas productivity growth, I think there's a lot of promise that uh, maybe we'd have a productivity boom uh, coming, you know, as a function of AI and other other actions. And the reality is, productivity is actually chopped sideways since the COVID period. The measured productivity in the economy—that's output per hour worked. And so you look at that and you say nominal wage growth at four or five percent, productivity growth that's most mainly flat. The difference between those creates structural inflation in the economy, and that is interestingly lining up with what we're seeing on the measured side. When you sort of take the bottoms up approach price by price and all of that is just too high for the fed's mandate yeah okay so let's explore that further um inflation it's still way too high for the fed's mandate um even going back to the beginning of the year that remember like a lot of folks were expecting what was it like six cuts this year i want to get your take well obviously that's definitely out the out the window um we know that what do you what is kind of your thought process on the fed's interest rate policy. We've had some interesting guests on the show who even thought that, you know, maybe we might even see a probability of a hike that that's increased. What's your take on um, the interest rate policy for, you know, headed into the summer, maybe remainder of the year? Well, certainly if you just looked at a central bank, you know, in a, in a normal circumstance, and you said, we have a set of conditions where uh, unemployment's at secular lows, the growth rate in the economy has been, you know, at or above potential for seven quarters in a row, um, and inflation remains elevated uh, after a period of being way above what the target is. You'd look at that set of conditions and you'd say that central bank probably at a minimum should be doing, you know, keeping rates stable and possibly hiking further given that set of circumstances. And so I think that uh, you know, in many ways, people look at the Fed and they try and read the tea leaves on exactly what Powell said in this meeting or that meeting. And the reality is it doesn't really matter because Chairman Powell is going to respond to the data and the and the Fed is going to respond to the data that they see. And so even though they thought that they might cut a lot, you know, coming into the into the beginning of the year, the data hasn't complied. They haven't gotten the confidence that they needed in order to behave that way. And so what that functionally means is that they're probably going to transition to an easing cycle in a much slower pace than uh, than you know certainly was expected at the beginning of the year. Now, does that mean that they're going to transition to hikes? I think they're a little boxed in, and I think this is one of the challenges of trying to give forward guidance from a central banker's perspective, is it really does constrain their flexibility. Like the hurdle to be able to switch to hikes is probably very high, meaning you know inflation printing one or two percent higher on an annualized rate than what it's printing right now before they would have the e sufficient evidence uh, to really start a renewed hiking cycle. Um, and so more likely than not, what they're going to do is uh, is what many central bankers do. Uh, the actual natural state for a central banker is not to do much. The natural state for a central banker is one with great inertia, which is to basically just stay put until you find enough information that drives you uh, to move in one direction or the other. And so I think the most likely circumstance is the Fed will sort of keep rolling in this in this state right now, which is they'll keep collecting more information, trying to gain confidence for cuts. 
uh, even as inflation prints, you know, above what their uh, what their target is for an extended period of time. 